All right, so in regards to Judgment Day, Jesus says, not all who call out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. What that means is there will be people that he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. No, I know, I know, I know. That's a scary scripture, bro. So let's actually take a look at this scripture today. And let's figure out exactly who Jesus is talking about when he says, depart from me. I never knew you. Because the truth is, so many Christians live in fear that this is them. So let's break this down and make sure it's not you. Matthew 7, 21 through 23 says, and this is Jesus speaking, by the way, not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of the Father will enter. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name. We cast out demons in your name. We perform many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's law. That's heavy. So first, let me start by saying this. I grew up my entire life hearing this scripture in church. And I always thought it was talking about sinners, the worldly people, the lost, you know, those far from God. Because, I mean, that makes sense to me. But that's not what the scripture said at all. Pay attention. He said, Lord, we prophesied in your name cast out demons in your name, perform miracles in your name. You're telling me Jesus is gonna say to those people, depart from me, I never knew you? All right, I must be missing something. Who are these people then? Well, I'll tell you, they're Christians. These are the people who have been sitting in the pews next to you every Sunday, week after week, year after year. People you have prayed with, that you're close to. Uh, okay, that's not very comforting. Now I'm really worried, is it me? How do I know? Well, I am so glad you asked. So the best way that I can think to explain this to you is like this. When I was growing up in the 90s, there was this ad that ran everywhere. TV, radio, commercials, magazines. You could not escape this ad campaign. And that ad was this. Secondhand smoke kills. Oh, 90s kids, you remember that? They shoved that down our throats till we were blue in the face, man. And it worked, too. I remember at 10 years old walking into Chili's, my mom and dad walked in, a lady blew some smoke, and I walked through it. I ran into the restaurant shouting, I've got cancer! My mom was like, no, Kelly, that's not how it works. I'm like, yes, it is. I've seen the ads. And don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not downplaying secondhand smoke. It's bad. But do you know what I think is going to be way more damaging to people than secondhand smoke? secondhand Jesus. You see, the people in this verse that Jesus is talking about, they have lived their entire Christian lives on secondhand Jesus. Oh, what, what is secondhand Jesus? Secondhand Jesus is when you base your walk with God on somebody else. It's your relationship with Jesus solely being based on someone else's relationship with Jesus. You know, I go to church because my mom always went to church. So I go to her grandma went, my great, great grandma went. So we just go to church. My girlfriend loves Jesus and she is so fine. So I love him too. All my friends go to church and they love Jesus. So yeah, count me in. Secondhand Jesus is when you try to access the father through somebody else other than Jesus. Now, right now, some of you might be thinking, that's ridiculous. This doesn't happen. No one would ever live that way. Oh, really? It wasn't long ago I got asked to go to a church and pray for an 80-year-old man who had just had a heart attack. The first thing I asked him when I sat down was, do you have a relationship with Jesus? And this is what he said to me. Yeah, my mom did, so I'm good. Excuse me? I said, can you explain that? He said, my mom prayed for all of us kids. She went to church and prayed for us all the time, so I'm going to be in heaven with her. He has been living his whole life on secondhand Jesus. You see, this man was fully convinced that because his mom had a relationship with Jesus and because she prayed over him, he got to go to heaven too. Sadly, however, that's not how this works. There are going to be so many people that get to heaven. They know all the scriptures. They can sing along with all of our songs. They know the Christian words and they've got the bumper stickers. They never missed a Sunday service, but they also never got to know Jesus for themselves. That, my friends, is secondhand Jesus. You see, I don't know about you, but I don't want to get to heaven one day and finally get to look at Jesus and say, man, I am so happy to see you, only to find that he looks back at me and says, but who are you? Jesus quit playing. It's me, Kelly K, the guy on TikTok. I make like really good videos for you. Hmm, no, it doesn't ring a bell. Jesus, come on, man. I preach in churches every Sunday. I travel and do ministry for you. I pray for people. Hmm, no, still not sure. Jesus, come on, it's me. I give money to ministries and to the poor. I help you. Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. Is your mom Echo Cop? Yes, now you're getting it. Yeah, I love her. She's here. She was on 
fire for me. She's amazing. I knew you'd remember. That's my mom. Oh, and your grandma, Cleo Cop? Yes, you got it. That's my grandma. Oh, yes, she's here. I love her. She's amazing, too. But who are you? You see, the truth is, unless you have a real relationship with Jesus yourself, no one else can do the work for you. As good looking as your boyfriend may be, he can't take you to heaven with him. As amazing as your mom, dad, grandma, or grandpa may have been, they can't take you to heaven with them either. You see, this verse says, only those who actually do the will of my father will enter the kingdom of heaven. Yeah, well, that's great for you, Kelly. You're, you're a preacher. You know the will of God for your life. What about me? What, you, you want to know the will of God for your life too? I'm so happy to tell you. It is so simple. Enter into a relationship with Jesus by calling on his name and believing in your heart that he is the son of God and that he paid the way for you. Get in his word and let it set you on fire. Burn as bright as you can for Jesus and then go spread that fire as far and as wide as you can. If you do that, when you get to heaven, oh son, Jesus is going to be waiting for you. He's going to be standing there posted up with a high five and me right next to it saying, we've been waiting for you. You see, you can do all the good works in the world in the name of Jesus. But unless you actually know him personally, it's never going to be enough. Unless you receive the gift that he died on the cross to give to you, no matter what else you do, it will never be enough. So let me encourage you today. Don't live in fear of this verse anymore. If you know that you know that you know that you have a relationship with Jesus, you've got nothing to be afraid of. Judgment day for you has already come and gone. It happened 2,000 years ago on the cross. Jesus bought that for you. So if you've made Jesus Lord of your life, you tell the devil to shut up and go back to hell. Stop whispering in my ear, son. I know what Jesus bought and paid for for me. Go sell your lies somewhere else, because I know who I am. However, if you're watching this right now and you're realizing that you've been getting by on secondhand Jesus, I have some really good news for you. You don't have to anymore. Entering into a relationship with Jesus is the most amazing and the easiest thing to do in the world. You ready to make Jesus Lord of your life today? Just let him know that's what you want to do. The Bible says, believe in your heart that he is the son of God, that he paid the price for you. And if you believe that, then confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord of your life. And if you do that right now, you are saved. Welcome to our family. Now, your next step is to repent of your sins, which does not mean feel awful about everything you've done. That just means you change your mind and you change your direction. I used to follow the world. Now I follow his word. What could be easier than that? So until next time, think about that for a minute. Hey, if this message blessed you today, please check out my brand new book. It just came out. It is a 40-day devotional called Think About That for a Minute, Volume 2. Every single day for 40 days, we're going to take a scripture, break it down, apply it to our life. There's a prayer for the day and then space for you to write down what God is speaking to you. Look, this is an excellent tool and resource to come alongside your Bible reading. It shouldn't take place of it. This book has blessed so many people. It's blessed me. I know it'll bless you. Go read the comments on any of my videos. You can get it today at kellykministries.com or grab it on Amazon if you want a cheaper, faster, free shipping. Either way, get it today. And you know, think about that for a minute.